Welcome to a Fearless Friday, where I do a work in progress, a whip, and we chat about fear. I'm going to read a little more of My Friend Fear, the book, by Mira Lee Patel, and chat while um, see the clock, and it will go over my time, um, where I read part of her book, and we chat about it. So, it says... We're still in chapter one. So, first, say to yourself, what would be? First, say to yourself, what would be? Then do what you have to do. It's a quote from Epicletus, and this is her illustration of the quote. How fear became my friend. Like everyone, I came into this world without fear. I was born with no concepts of desire or consequence, only a deep hunger for newness and all five senses intact, to see, smell, hear, taste, and touch, to experience as many things as possible in the hours after my eyes open and before they are again closed. I want to feel. The morning sun is warm and makes me more alive. It feels like a soft blanket that follows me through the day. In the afternoon, it burns brighter and more fiercely still. And I wonder how much closer it's gotten to earth. I'm hot and a bit uncomfortable, but I want to know how much I can endure. I test my physical and emotional boundaries and push them to expand. If my curiosity has limits, it has never presented itself to me, and I've never once asked to see it. I like to explore. <clears throat> so, where I left off yesterday, um, on Tuesday, and I'm talking about Mira Patel and her first page about senses, about when she was born, and about the senses that we have when we're born, and, you know, all we want to do is feel and explore. I, you know, I don't know. I, I can resonate with that. I love using my senses to sense the world, to see where things are, and you know what? That is so calming. On, and I'll go with this for now. <clears throat> Do you have a favorite place you like to go? One of my favorite places is the seashore, but not with all the people around. I used to take my uh, Girl Scouts to Assateague, and we would have <clears throat> one of the special campsites. It's right off the um, off one of the sand dunes, and loved it because in the morning the horses were on the beach the crabs that were there you could see the pelicans diving in and the dolphins diving up it was just so fabulous and it was quiet and you could hear the ocean breathing so what i would do is in the mornings before all the girls would wake up and start breakfast and you know start our activities i used to go over to the sand dune and sit there with my devotional material and listen. Just listen to the waves crashing. To the waves. It felt like breathing in and breathing out with the waves was like, felt like you were breathing with God, you know? Like the waves are God's breath and, and uh, you're breathing with God when you breathe in and out with the flow of the waves. So when I get very anxious, sometimes I go to that place in my mind. I imagine myself in that place. I imagine the sound of the waves, the smell of the seashore, the sights of the animals running free and just blessing the earth. <clears throat> you can taste the salt in the air. I just go back to that place in my imagination and soak up the calm that I felt when I was first there. Another 
his place I like in the Poconos. It's um, called Holly Ross Pottery. And we used to go there. They have a swinging bridge in the back and the, the, a little pine lined uh, trail back to a little pond that has a um, that has a bench, a sitting bench there. And it would be fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Quiet. Sometimes you could hear the frogs croaking if it was that time of the year. Um, one time I accidentally dropped my camera <laughs> in the lake. And that was bye-byes. Um, but no biggie. And what else? That was the smell of the pine. There was a little river running through it because, of course, it fed to the pond or from the pond. I don't remember which. But uh, it, um, the rushing water, you could hear the water running over the stones. Almost like it was talking to you. And you could you know, smell the pines. You could listen to the water laughing. Um, the taste, I remember, I used to chew bubblegum a lot then when I was a kid, so I taste bubblegum when I go there in a simpler, happier time. And... You know, I would see and feel the pine. Um, <clears throat> they were the soft, long needle pines, and they it would just coat a blanket of of this stuff as the walkway, and you could hear them crunch under your feet, and feel them give like a soft, like you're walking on a soft cushion, and. You know, you could you could touch, you could feel the breeze on your skin. It was just such a beautiful, quiet, calm place. That and another sanctuary that's up there. I forget the name of. It's a, a bird sanctuary, and and they do fabulous um, studies and things up there. It was the first the last glacial lake, pure glacial lake in Pennsylvania. Anyway, <laughs> so that. Um, let me pour the H back in and decide which one I'm going to be doing next. So anyway, when I'm stressed out, I go to those places. I go back in my imagination and just sit there until my breathing calms, until I feel strong enough come back from there. I love having an active imagination. Um, not everybody can do that. A lot of people can. I hope you can. Um, maybe if you just keep practicing, it's just, maybe it's a skill you can learn. I came by it naturally because I love to read and when you read, you kind of envision what's going on. Sometimes you just get so into the reading of the words that the pictures are forming in your mind like a dream and you don't even realize you're reading. <laughs> Do you ever feel that? I do. Um, obviously, or I wouldn't have said something. But anyway, I absolutely love it. And you can use your active imagination to um, just a spot. Do I have just a spot right here? When, when I'm choosing which one to do next, I go with, okay, what can I see? Them? Oh, I'm missing that. Shoot. Let's go back and catch that. Where was I? I? I just go back to that imaginary place until the anxiety or the fear passes. Um, 
Do you have a favorite place that you can go in your mind to help calm you down? Another way is um, it's a form of self-hypnosis, but it's not really. Don't be afraid of that. It's just a, a way to calm your mind and concentrate on something other than your worries if you're trying to fall asleep. My dad taught it to me. He learned it in the Navy. I believe. I think he learned it in the Navy. Come on, you. Stay where I put you, please. Um, and I'll teach it to you now. It's an awesome relaxation technique. It is, you, you might already know it. Uh, you tighten up the, a muscle group and release it. Like the first, I start with my toes and go all the way up. Like I tighten my toes real tight and release it. I do it three times. Number two, and release. Number three, and release. And each time you release, you feel um, you feel the relaxation that it's bringing to that muscle group. You start at your toes, then you stretch your arches, and contract. And relax. You stretch your arches up. Contract. Pull them tight. And relax. Do that a third time. And as the third time, you're not really concentrating on your muscle group per se, but you are concentrating on the relaxation that comes after you've released the tension. And then I go up to my ankles and I you know, bend them one way and the other and straighten them out and, you know, pull them back and anything to, like, tighten that muscle group. <laughs> and then relax, do that three times. And you just keep going up your body. And usually by the time I'm to my stomach, I'm already asleep. <laughs> it helps me sleep. It also helps me get into contemplative prayer. Um... It helps with uh, like restless legs. It helps with a lot of different things, puts you in a cooler mood, so to speak. I love it. My daddy taught me that when I was little. <clears throat> and that's one way to relieve stress. So again, with a new drill bag, put the drills in. I'm just going to put them in here for now. And then I cut out the, the symbol. Put that, put that symbol in the bag. So that it's up, so that it's a toward the top, so it doesn't get covered by the gems when you pour the extra gems in. What's that one? What's this one here? These are going to be hard to see right side and upside down. That's one way to relax yourself and calm your fears, calm your anxieties. I'm all about trying to find natural, non-drug related ways to reduce anxiety. And contemplative prayer or meditation is a key way to it too. Mira, in today's reading, recommended exploring using all four of your senses uh, and 
it gets your mind off of focusing on the bad because you're focusing on something else. You're focusing on the good around you. It's a positive exercise, a relaxing exercise. Sometimes um, one of the ways of contemplative prayer if and meditation, if you can't keep your mind from jumping around, Henry Nowen calls it the monkey mind, if you can't keep the keep your thoughts from jumping around like monkeys when you're trying to meditate, calm down, pray, whatever you want to, whatever wording you want to use for it, then you you look around. You, what do you see? Just sort of in your mind, point out what you're seeing. Okay, I see a dresser and. I see the sheets I love to snuggle in, or um, I remember feeling that blanket warm on me last night. Uh, and then um, you know, I, I can smell the coffee that's brewing downstairs. I can taste, or just about taste it. And I know how it affects me and how I feel after I have my first cup of coffee or tea in the morning. Come on, you. Stay on there. <coughs> so you go through your senses. What do you see? What do you touch? Um, how are the feelings inside? What do you taste? What do you smell? And what do you feel? Can you feel the blanket nice and soft on you? Can you feel the warmth of your beverage um, as it rolls down your throat as you swallow? Can you taste the orange that you're eating for breakfast? That kind of thing. And also feel where your body is holding pain. Our anxieties are held in our body in different ways. And one way is the tension, the tightness in our neck and our shoulders. We often say, I just can't shoulder this burden. Well, that's the pain in your shoulders telling you that you are overburdened. Um, and oh, that person's a pain in my neck. You thought I was going to see something else in you. That too is a pain there too. Uh, so it, you know, it's telling you your body is telling you things, and you have to listen to it. So that's one way of calming down. No matter where you are, your monkey mind is occupied when you focus on something outside of yourself, or within yourself as long as you're not thinking about the thing that gives you the most anxiety. And that's not easy. That takes practice. Don't chide yourself if you can't do it right away. Uh, it takes months. and I'm not going to pull any punches. It takes months to learn to calm the monkey mind down. You're not going to achieve it the first time. If you do, it was a blessing, but but don't beat yourself up if you can't do it. Don't beat yourself up. Don't get, oh, I'm frustrated. You know, why am I like this? Why can't I do this? And No. What you do is imagine it, the problem or the, the um, see, the brain doesn't stop. <coughs> when you're meditating, your brain doesn't stop. It keeps on going. It's going to keep on working on problems unless you give it something else to do. So what you're doing is putting that, like imagine yourself floating down a stream or um, sitting in a, in a beach chair with your feet in the stream or something like that in your special place. And what you do is when you notice yourself, distracted by something, you go back to that something 
and put it on a leaf put it on a lily pad or something and watch it in your mind float away you must be gentle on yourself you cannot be critical about yourself or that will leak into your meditations and it just won't it won't allow you to get deep enough so anytime you think of something else you think of a worry or you think of um, someone if you think of someone else instead of putting them on a leaf what I would do is just lift them up. Why did your mind go there? Why did you want to... Why did your mind bring that person up to you? Are they going through a hard time? Maybe you can pray or ask Spirit or the universe or Mother Earth to protect that person and help them. So, and then you put that prayer on a leaf. You put that image of them healed and whole or having their problem solved you put that on a leaf and let it float away and then you know you do that with every concern that comes up and eventually your mind will come to say okay i i know this routine this is the time when i'm supposed to be concentrating on just what's there at the moment. Now what I would recommend is putting a timer on, setting a timer, a gentle timer, not one that's going to go and make an awful noise when you when you're done, but something gentle like a Zen bell or something like that. Um, maybe on your phone you can set it for like 10-15 minutes at first, five minutes at first. And I guarantee you that after um, a month or so of practicing that, you will get to a point where you feel yourself, the insides of yourself getting anxious, and you can take yourself directly back to that relaxed feeling that you get when you're when you're meditating. I can guarantee that. I felt that on a number of occasions. And you can actually hear spirit saying to your, you know, not like verbal words, but you can actually feel what spirit is guiding you to. Um, when I first learned to do that and soak that in, I was working part-time in a card shop and it led me to the decision of going to seminary. <laughs> So you also have to be careful what you uh, what you hold up in prayer and meditation. And that question that you might start with, uh, you have to be careful about that because you will get an answer, and it may or may not be the one you're uh, you were hoping for. So just saying, just an FYI. Um, see more tea. I hope you enjoy Fearless Fridays. I hope you are enjoying the very beginnings of Mira Lee Patel's book. Oops. A couple more. Should have gone in the bag. I know. I'm enjoying it. I'm, this is like the third time I'm <laughs> going through the book as I go through it with you. And each time I hear and see something different. And I'm just going to be open. I'm going to read and be open to spirit and let spirit guide my words. Like I hope you let spirit guide your words as you go through your day. Um, if something I say doesn't ring true, okay, drop it. You know, don't do it. It's quite all right. What is that symbol? Is it a plus sign? think so. I'm going to do the big pink one next to the red. So I'm looking for a plus sign. Oh, that's a C and a V. I don't know what that is. Okay, so there's the A. There's the plus sign. Pink. Okay, oops. I'm going to get a plastic bag.
I'd really love to know your comments. Um, where's your favorite place? Have you meditated before? Um, um, done a contemplative, contemplative prayer idea? Uh, have you, you know, what what's your spiritual affiliation? Are you involved in a um, religious community of some kind? Uh, do you think you know religion is just totally out of whack? That you're spiritual but not religious? Uh, that kind of thing. I'd love to know. I'd love to know. I'd love to know what you might be afraid of and, and how your journey with meditation slash prayer is going. Um, if you have any questions about those practices. and I am starting <clears throat> a series on drawing nearer. I started one on breath prayer, which is another way to get into contemplative prayer um, and help out with daily anxiety. I'll link all that below. pink one. And that is the next one, next to the red. Okay. I, I do the next symbol that sticks out the most. And that's how I decide what I'm doing next. Um, yeah. What was I saying again? You, you know, getting to know me, you are going to get to know that my train of thought derails often. Um... My mind is not linear. It doesn't go in a straight line. It goes, it connects everything like, uh, like a fishing net would. I used to say spider web, but since I don't like spiders, <laughs> I'm afraid of spiders. Um, yeah, that's a fear I'm not going to, uh, like God work on me with. <laughs> I've worked on many fears, but I'm going to keep my fear of spiders. Thank you. Anyway, see, my train of thought just switched track and went a different road and derailed. So, yeah, there's that. If you get to know me, you're going to know that I get derailed. But sometimes those tangents, those things that come up, are more important than what I was figuring I'd talk about anyway. Uh, they get more comments and, and more discussion going. So... And I, I love to read your comments. And again, I'm having a contest <clears throat> for those who are new new subscribers. When we get to 100 subscribers, I want to have a... Uh, I'll pick at random. Well, first I'll tell you which, uh, which video I am uploading right after we reach 100. And in that, I'll ask a question. And as you put your answer in that, you would be involved in that contest because I would do a comment picker at random and I would contact you um, by private message if you won. And I have so much to give away. <clears throat> I have extra kits. I have um, extra tools. Not these flimsy ones, but, you know, like hand-turned pens. I've got lots of stuff that I am trying to declutter um, that are in perfectly good shape, that are, you know, would be valuable to someone else, too. So there's that. I just want to build up this community. I want to you to know, um, to spread the word about... Fearless Fridays and Tea and Talk Tuesdays. Um, those are the two days I'm going to work on fear and, and social anxiety and things like that. The other ones are just going to be fun, fun, fun. Fun stuff and tips. So, so I'm thinking <clears throat> you can have a mailbag Monday. We can have a Tea and Talk Tuesday, a What's in Wanda's Work Basket Wednesday. Can you tell I like alliteration? Uh, <laughs> that was, what, Wednesday? Thursday, it's Crafting the Crystal. Or some other kind of whip and chat. Um, 
there's a lot of things I want to do with Crystal, but sometimes she's not into it. <laughs> I'm hoping to get my daughter, who is also a diamond painter, involved. So maybe it'll be crafting with Catherine. <laughs> crafting with Katie for my daughter. Um, anyway, so that would be a Thursday. Friday is Fearless Friday. You're watching that now. I don't know. I'll t I'm taking Saturday off, um, Sunday off. Saturdays I may do a live Saturday Saturday live instead of Saturday night live. It's Saturday live. I may try to do that, <clears throat> but that's after we reach a certain number of members. So Saturdays I'm going to be off. Sundays I do planners. I write out my planner for the week and decorate the pages and that kind of thing so that will be setting up my week sunday setting up sunday with my planner the stickers and what i'm doing of those days of the week i'm going to be teaching and writing so i'll be with you for about an hour on those days and Then I have lots of other stuff to do, so I will try to get them done the day before and upload them the day before so that at midnight on that day, it will be midnight Eastern Standard Time because uh, I'm in Pennsylvania, so that you'll have it for the day it's meant to be on. I'm waiting today. I'm waiting for... <coughs> FedEx. Oh, I can't stand FedEx for a number of reasons. Anyway, I'm waiting for FedEx to deliver a package to me from Happy Planner, which I will open and uh, show you on a Mailbag Monday. I have something from Star Or and from, let's see, other one. Oh, uh, Dreamer Design. I have a kit from them that I'd like to share with you. So, how have I missed the red here? You can get that red. Huh. Anyway. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, Wanda's work basket is not just about diamond painting, although that's what I'm heavily into at the moment. You can work on your craft any craft while we chat you don't have to do diamond painting you can I, and a lot of people um, with the whip and chats they just do their work their craft along with you so I'm going to be maybe making some cover minders on a crafty Thursday that kind of thing I'm going to do some quilling I'm going to do a lot of card making all kinds of things on that Thursday crafty Thursday whether my daughter or granddaughter work along with me or not. How's that? <laughs> so anyway, I'll be with you an hour a day. Maybe I'll take, I'm taking Saturdays off from now. For now until we get enough that I want to do a live. All right, so. Okay, that's done with this pinky purple. I got to snag that red and go back and do that red. I know this is really enthralling watching me do this, but. Hmm. Well, I don't have a. <clears throat> I don't have the plastic in there. I'll have to put a Sharpie, a J Sharpie on there. Anyway, my husband and I we differ politically. Um, we differ spiritually. We differ in many ways, but we love each other. We've been um, together since high school, since 1978. Christmas 1978 was our first date. We met in the library. I was library aide, and he would come and um, take out science fiction books, like two or three. And the next day, he'd bring back 
two or three others that he read before or you know I'm like wow this guy reads a lot I really like that <laughs> turns out he would come in the days that I was working in the library you know student work and he would just take out books to talk to me <laughs> so then uh, as we started dating we would sneak into the microfilm room <laughs> And get yelled at for that you know we would just be kissing and talking um, so Christmas Day was my first was our first date and I gotta tell you before he came up his mother said to him take a look at how the mother looks because usually a woman um, starts looking like her mother when she gets older <laughs> my mom was sick she was in her robe um, Christmas afternoon, she was just, you know, she does so much, she exhausts herself, and I'll talk about my mom in a different one, but she's awesome, um, but that day she was sick, after holidays she was always sick, because she did so much for the holiday for other people, and it was exhausting, so she'd work herself into exhaustion, and then recover, anyway, <laughs> just so funny. Um, then in January, <clears throat> one of our dates was to ride the train down to Philadelphia and look at the lights the week after Christmas, and that was the first time he held my hand. His birthday's in January, so that's the first day we kissed, and on from there. I mean, so I've known him since 1978, 79. I graduated high school in 79. He graduated in 78. Uh, so I guess... I'm, we met, I met him in my junior year, so it was 77, December 77. It was he graduated 78, and I was there at his graduation. Anyway, I, it's just, you know, just a high school love story. Um, we'll talk more about him at another time. Let's see, why don't we go to the top pink one, and that is a straight line. And that would be this one. Uh, so this week I don't know when I'm teaching I had dinner with my husband last night we will have dinner together maybe probably tonight and then Friday and at another time I'll talk about why we don't have dinner together every single night what's going on with work and all that kind of stuff at another time, we'll talk about that. I don't know that he wants our private life aired, so <clears throat> I'll have to get his permission for that. All right, I'm getting, I'm getting the bag ready. I'll put the symbol in the bag. And we're going to do that pink one at the top. Can you see that? <clears throat> And again, I put the Tombow liquid glue on the top and use a pen that has um, a plastic tip on it with these little ones. With the bigger uh, rhinestones, I use the pick-me-up, the, um, the pick-me-up pen with the blue putty in it. Sometimes I just use uh, tweezers if they're really giving me problems. <clears throat> Rounds don't really like to be picked up with tweezers to begin with, so. So, I am looking to create this channel so that, number one, we can have fun together with uh, a craft that we absolutely love, and I adore this craft, it's what I'm into right now, so that we can chat and talk about the fears and anxieties in our lives and how we are managing that in this time and to talk about just general things just to get to know each other general family things so that's what I would like to do that's what this is all about I hope you can join me um, like and subscribe I am running a contest every day practically um, until 
when we reach different subscriber levels, we will be, I will be raffling or, you know, picking comments at random, and I'll let you know ahead of time which uh, video to comment on so that I can use that to, to pick your comments for the winner. I've seen others do it that way, and I like that way. So anyway, uh, yeah. <clears throat> That's what I want this to be, this channel to be. Um, I can ramble on and on for hours. I used to be called Chatty Kathy when I was younger because I would never stop talking and asking questions and you know, that's as a toddler. <laughs> um, lots of interesting things to talk about and to do. And I'm so glad you're taking this journey with me. I'm so glad that I have companions on the way to talk about anxiety and coping and to share our coping ideas with each other on anxiety and depression. And <clears throat> it's not just craftiness that helps with that. Sometimes we have to talk about the psychological end of it. And I love psychology. I studied it uh, often. I've been in counseling a number of times with a number of counselors. Some were great. Some were not so great. We can share our experiences with how we pick a good counselor at some point. To remind me. If you want me to do um, a video on that, remind me. So anyway, that's what I would wish this channel to be. As you get to know me, I go on tangents verbally, and my train of thought will derail or switch tracks every once in a while. I hope to get back to it. If for some reason I don't get back to a topic that you were following, just put comments down below and I will answer them. I enjoy answering uh, emails, emails and uh, private messages and comments. So that's that. Okay, my time is up for today for Fearless Friday. Thank you for allowing me to read from Mira Patel and to talk about our anxieties and our depressions together because I really think we need a community. Those of us who can't even get out of the house, um, we need a community to be together on this. We need each other. I need you. I'm not going to do the Barney song. You, I love you. You love me. Whatever. Happy family. Uh... I just did the Barney song that I said I wasn't going to do, did I? Oh, well. See, the tangents. Uh, my train of thought just changes tracks often. <laughs> I hope you can tolerate that. So, I will see you next week on a Tea and Talk Tuesday where we talk about fear some more. Okay? All the links are down below. Um, for the things you might see in the video, if I'm missing something, just ask in the comments, and I would be glad to to fix that omission. All right. I wish you a blessed weekend, a beautiful, bright, blessed weekend, and peace. Bye. <laughs>